This video is about the Doppler effect and its application in medicine. And believe it or not, but you also encounter the Doppler effect on a daily basis. You know, when you're standing at the side of the road and there's an ambulance approaching, the sound of that ambulance actually sounds quite high-pitched, but as soon as it went past you, as it is going away from you, the sound immediately changes to a very low-pitched tone, right? Well, that is actually because the ambulance, relative to you, is going into the same direction as the sound wave it is going off. So it's basically chasing its own sound wave, which is going at 340 meters per second, the speed of sound in air. Um, the ambulance will never reach that speed, of course, but it will compress. You could imagine it as compressing uh, these, these sound waves to a higher pitch, to a higher frequency. And the opposite happens once the ambulance has gone away, has uh, passed you. So the ambulance is going into the other direction, then the sound wave is going relative to you, and uh, so it will be fleeing from its own sound wave, you could say. So in that regard, to you, it will sound as if the pitch shifted again and changed to, to a much deeper tone, to a much lower tone and to a much lower frequency. And, well, as you can imagine, the faster the ambulance is moving, the stronger this, this shift in, in frequency will be. And uh, that is pretty much what the Doppler effect, what the Doppler shift is all about. That's it. You can hear frequencies of up to 20,000 uh, oscillations per second at best. Your dog can uh, hear slightly beyond that into ultrasound. But in medicine, we use a few million oscillations per second. Uh, a very, very high frequency, very high pitched tone, if one could hear it. And uh, if you point that at, for example, arteries or the heart or something, you can imagine um, that there's blood inside and all these, these little red blood cells in that blood are moving in a certain direction and the sound is moving into a certain direction and you can imagine what happens. Just with the ambulance, you can tell if something is coming towards you, if it's going away from you, and uh, the stronger that frequency shift is, the stronger that Doppler shift is, the faster that blood is moving. Well, you can probably imagine that the math behind that is actually more complex, but this channel is not about complex and boring math. Uh, you can just look that up on Wikipedia and ask me in the comments if you still have a question, but this is about applied physics, so let's do something. Let's start off with this rather simple device. It doesn't have any fancy displays or anything. All it'll do is uh, render you able to hear the Doppler shift. That's my radial artery, the artery on my wrist. And the funny thing is you can actually see the pulse wave in some bits, as it is a quite superficial artery in the case of my left hand. Now pay close attention to the pitch of that tone, and pay attention how it changes when I move the device to my neck. I bet you could easily make out which artery has the highest blood flow, right? Just by hearing that Doppler shift. Ah, that's right. The carotid artery, that's the artery on my neck, has a, a velocity about four times as high as the artery on my wrist. Um, in the carotid artery, the blood should be flowing at about 0.4 meters per second. Now, the thing is, amongst other factors, the Doppler shift is greatly dependent on the angle between the uh, receiver, between the ultrasound head and the actual artery where the blood flows in. Uh, for now, we always assume the 90 degrees angle to make it very simple, but of course that's not the case with arteries. Um, and if you vary that angle, you can greatly hear, you can hear a great variation in the, the Doppler shift, even though of course the blood flow velocity remains the same.
Also, there's not just one road, one artery in your body, but there may just be more blood vessels just close to each other, so you gotta know what you're pointing at. Or you might just be hearing an artery and a vein at the same time. So you can see why it's very hard to make a proper diagnosis with this device, for example in regard to clogging of an artery. That's why doctors will usually use a conventional ultrasound device that also displays a nice image to go with it and uh, also uses a different type of Doppler, a gated Doppler, so they can measure the blood flow in just a, a very specific area. For example, as shown here, right next to the valve in the heart. And what you can see just below that image is the actual Doppler signal. You can see it turns negative at some point. That is uh, because, you know, the heart is not like a continuous pump, but it does uh, short bursts of pumping, the heart beats, so you can feel the pulse waves that you could see on my wrist. And uh, in between, until the next heartbeat, there might be a slight reverse flow of the blood in the, in the arteries, in the blood vessels in general. That's perfectly normal, uh, but you can see it on, on the Doppler signal on the screen there. And on the right, on the left, you have the, the Doppler shift. And on the right, you have the according uh, meters per second velocity. It also takes into account uh, the, the angle of the ultrasound probe in regard to, to that blood vessel or, well, in this regard, uh, the, the ventricle of the heart. So you will have a proper reading for that. So in case of the heart, of course, uh, the negative double signal is not because of reverse flow, the way it came in, but because of ejection through the arteries, which you cannot see on, on this picture because they are pretty much in the next layer, in the layer towards the top from what you can see right here. Remember, if the original signal shifts to a lower frequency, that means uh, the stuff, or the blood in this case, is going away from you, and if there's a shift to a higher frequency, that means the blood is coming towards you. And well, we can easily visualize this with color. So here you can actually see how the blood fills the atrium, then moves uh, through the valve into uh, the main bit of the heart, the ventricle of the heart, and then is ejected through a structure that uh, seems to be nearby to that septum, just on a, on a higher level, on a higher slide from what we can see, and then is being ejected through the aorta that is just in that place. And moving the ultrasound probe, we can move our vision to a higher level there. And what you can see just in the center is the aorta with the aortic valve. And you can see as the blood leaves the ventricle to be pumped into the aorta and thus into the entire body. Also, if you look at the heart again without the Doppler, you might think there is a hole in the heart, a congenital heart defect as they call that, between the, the septum on the lower bit. Right, it seems like a hole between the atria of the heart, but if you apply the color-coded Doppler, you can actually see that there's no blood flow at all from the left atrium to the right, right atrium. So um, all that's there is, uh, oh, well, a very thin septum, so it's barely visible on the ultrasound image, but, well, the Doppler tells a very clear story there. There's no hole in the heart, in this heart, this is perfectly healthy. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the combined look into physics and medicine, as well as the look into my heart. Thanks for watching.